Hey guys, this is Mike, the host of Craft Beer Storm, also founder and brewer of Barrow Brewing Company in glorious New Hampshire. Today we are going to Germany. We are going to talk to Andreas Wagner of ProBrow. He has a lot of brewing experience as a brewer. He's uh, very in touch with the, the German uh, culture and, and beer there. He is German. Uh, which there you go, and, and I've learned a lot from him. Um, but uh, without further ado, let, yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, we're here today with Andreas Wagner of ProBrow. Uh, he has a lot of history um, in brewing, and um, you know, with different industries. And I, I, I felt it'd probably be a good could uh, get him on the podcast, get a perspective on, on German brewing and, and German beer because it's delicious. And um, he's in the uh, Salzburg area uh, near Munich. Uh, how are you doing, Andreas? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you could make the time. We, we tried to do this last week, but we got, uh, we got delayed, but that's no problem. I'm glad we got on the call today. So I'd like to, um, you know, start off, kind of get your story, you know, how you started. I know you were brewing in the past and, um, you know, you have some companies that you're running now that, uh, you know, to try to uh, help the, the beer industry and maybe um, you can get into your story. Like, how did you get started in the in the beer industry? Yeah, so actually I started like a uh, lot of craft breweries in New Zealand, but what a made up story actually, because we started... I think 14 years ago, in a small barn at a friend's house um, with a, I think it was a one and a half barrel brewing system where we did like experimental brews and all that stuff. And we started basically selling it to friends. And and we, we, we it was three friends and we all went to, went to university in Weinstefan where I grew up in Freising. Um, to study brewing engineering, um, and after that, I went to the company called Browton, a manufacturer for um, high-class brewing equipment. I'm still working with them a lot, and yeah, I worked in several different breweries, actually worldwide. So I was in the Caribbean in a brewery, which was kind of hard to work at uh, because the weather was really nice and the beaches were phenomenal yeah, right. in Aruba. Brewing is very hard. <laughs> you have the Caribbean now, right? I think you'd rather be on the beach, right, than, than just being in a brewery with like you know 100 degree heat and wow, that's a challenge. Yeah. So you said you were starting to start yeah. brew, um, you know, I guess at home. I guess you know with a bunch of guys and um, tell me about the German purity law. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, you probably pronounce it. Uh, what's the German purity law again? I should know how to pronounce this. The yes, I have to practice. Yeah, that. yeah, uh, but uh, that's that's kind of a, uh, hey, maybe you can uh, you know explain a little bit about it. I think there's there's, there's only you know certain uh, ingredients that are uh, allowed in beer. The rest are, are verboten, right? Yeah, pretty much. So the purity law is actually the vorläufige the speed uh, which means as much as. Uh, contemporary uh, beer law, which uh, tells you just to use um, certain ingredients in your beer, such as malt, barley malt, um, yeast, water, and hops. Um, and that's an it. interesting fact, actually, is that till, I think it was four years ago, maybe five years ago, not even dry hopping was allowed by the purity law. Wow. So it's a it's a very clear definition of how beer should be made and is made, and so you can declare it as a beer. Um, there is also a small misbelief in, in Bavaria, especially in the Bavaria. It's, it, the municipals, they take it really strict with the purity law. If you go outside of Germany, actually, it's, it's really very loose, and yeah, they don't really care. And it's more a thing about customs because you pay your beer taxes according to yeah what you produce like spirits, beer, wine. It's, it's pretty similar worldwide, I guess. Right. Um, that's an old law. It's like in the 1500s, I think it was created. 
And they kept. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen, exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's it's really good. Though. I mean, they came out with the purity laws to protect the people in the medieval ages because they were throwing in like crazy mushrooms in the beer, and people really get sick about beer. And that's why they came out with the purity law. And the interesting fact actually is that, according to the strict Bavarian purity law, there was not even wheat malt allowed in the beer. So they kept it for the nobles. Wheat beer actually was a beer for the nobles back in the time. That's why the Wittelsbacher, for example, like a royal uh, family, they they had the monopoly on the wheat beer for a long time. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> but the uh, Hefeweiss yeah, is, but, all, is, but, a, is a wheat-based ba- beer. That came after that? Or, I mean, what, what are the origins of that? Cause that's a delicious beer. But it's yeah, it's wheat. exactly. Like, um, I think it was, uh, I can't recall the whole history and all the names, but like I said, the, the, the nobles, they had the monopoly on the wheat beer, so they were the only ones allowed to produce wheat beer. And, for example, in the Bavarian purity law, you have to have over, I think it's 50 or 55 percent um, of wheat beer in, uh, of wheat malt in the wheat beer to call it a wheat beer. That's how strict it is. And what about the yeast that we use? Well, we make wheat beer, a, a bear brewing. We make the, we, well, we make the Hefeweizen uh, with the Vian Stefan yeast. Yeah, that's actually my favorite strain. Um, the, the W69 and 70. Uh, but with the yeast, it's also defined in the purity now. I'm just talking about the purity quick. Purity quickly, so you can't like produce a hellish with a pattern and a yeast that's all not by the purity law. But it's strict purity law. I mean, it's really hard to prove. You could prove it, but yeah. But it's, it's still like, it's a still active rule within, especially within Bavaria and Germany, and that for sure helps a lot to have like a nice beer quality, but it's somehow also risky restricting the breweries to do something fancy to experiment a lot so you're you're really tied in what you're doing I mean basically we're not allowed here to dose sugar into a top fermented beer for example like a double IPA dosing in sugar is a no go here I mean it's a different story to prove it to you but actually you're not allowed to do it right yeah, it's a, but German beer is delicious. All the German, and I did, I did get to Oktoberfest one year. Uh, it was a while ago. I need to go back there, and it was delicious. I love the the Polner, uh, uh beers, and you know the uh, Hofbrau. They're delicious. You know? Yeah, so the town, the town I'm living in. So actually, there's so many breweries in Bavaria. We have over six hundred breweries right now. And I think the very population is about 8 million people. Wow. And, for example, the town I'm living in is Traunstein, and we have three breweries. One is, uh, I think, 100,000 hectoliters. The other one is 15,000 hectoliters. And the smallest one is still 10,000 hectoliters. And the town's population is 18,000 people. And they're all three doing well. <laughs> wow. Well, Germany, they drink a lot of a lot of beer, and it's kind of a staple, you know, in the diet. I mean, they're drinking beer when they're young. I mean, and uh, but beer is good, you know. There you go. You know, there's good, Lumi, yeah. good qualities in beer. So, um, yeah, and and um, I think well, you know, we add local ingredients in our beer um, in. Uh, in the U.S., like we use some maple syrup and honey, and, and we even use um, eh, we we do the experimental thing like Oreo cookies in our beer, mm-hmm. but people like it. So I mean, we give them what they want, and it doesn't make them sick. I mean, it's Oreo cookie, but it's food, you know. So we're we're trending away towards the the purity law, and they they probably arrest me if I was in <laughs> certain regions of Germany. But do you see that German brewers are doing that? They're kind of experimenting, or how's that? What do you see out there? Uh, you actually you you can't because you're not allowed to sell it 
you're not allowed to sell it as a beer, you're not allowed to sell it as a beer mixed drink. Um, there is no way that you, that you can sell it. I mean, you can start selling it, but when they, when the so-called the German FDA, when they come after you, um, you know, pull back like all of the bottle from the shops and stuff. Wow. Because you're not allowed to sell it. But and you can't call it beer. I mean, you could sell it, but you can't call it beer? Or? No, you can't sell it. You, wow. You're not allowed to sell it because there is no way to, to tax you. So because the FDA is saying it's not a beer because it's not brewed according to the purity law, and the customs is saying, no, fuck, it, it's not a beer, it's, and it's obviously not a wine, so what's the tax on it? So they're not, and for sure they want to have their taxes. <laughs> so that's the problem. They they can't charge you. They can't charge you taxes on it. So it's not really a product you can sell wow. because it's not it's not taxable. Wow. Well, that's interesting. It's I interesting. Never knew that. Yeah, I know. You learn something new every day. <laughs> wow! I'm gonna let you do it. But um. So, but what we could do is I could go over to Austria and import beer from Austria, not ruled by the purity law, and it's totally illegal. But can you have you can have people come in and try your beer in your tap room, right? Do you have tap rooms, or or do you have to have a restaurant, or how does it work over there? Yeah, it's um, it's a traditional Breustuber, which is basically the tap room. Actually, it comes with a basically with a uh, restaurant, so you can have like nice German healthy food, a lot of pork in there as well. Um, that's like the typical um, tap room for a brewery over here, and yeah, it's 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 not a it's not a really big thing with um, having uh, seasonals. I mean, a lot of breweries are doing seasonals, but it's just starting. So we also see a craft beer scene coming up in Germany. Um, and for sure, they do a lot of experimental brews and they go really creative. And the, the really good thing about craft beer actually is that it, it's driving up, it's not so good for the consumers to say that, but they're driving up the prices a little bit and they make beer what it actually should be. It's, it's a really, really high value food and not something, yeah, which is crazy cheap. I mean, you can buy a whole crate of beer with 10 liters in a supermarket for about 10 euro, which is like $12. Wow. And that's, that's the pricing structure um, for a lot of areas in Germany. And craft beer right now is coming in. They charge more for the beer. They have a nice, uh, really nice product. They really take care about the, their ingredients, like local ingredients. Um, they tell about the ingredients, the malt, the hops they're using. They tell a different story than just like um, drink 10 liters of our beer every day. You know, it's more the story about like go out and try the beer, um, pay maybe a little bit more, but drink a little bit less. And yeah, that's I think that's helping the whole industry as well. Especially when the prices come up a little bit, um, it's not a harm for all brewers. In Germany. Now you're saying that dry hopping is allowed now under the law? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right now you, they changed a little bit something of the law there and the purity law and now you can dry hop. Um, I would diversify the breweries here and traditional breweries, um, they're not, they can be really small too, but they have like long history. Um, they, a lot of them are doing like really good beer. They really take care of their beer. Um, I would consider them as craft beer as well because they like craft the beer for centuries now. Um, but they're not having like the wide range of different beer styles or varieties. They typically do three to ten different styles within a year. And for sure, the main driver is always like Pilsner, Heller's, uh, wheat beer. Yeah, because of the the popular craft beers are very hoppy. Um, well, they have the, the, the dry hopping, uh, which makes the aroma and the taste uh, on kind of the back end. You know, whereas you know, if you put hops in the boil, it'd be it'd more be more bitter. 
but um, I mean, they allow, they allow, um, I don't know, maybe it's a, a stupid question, but other beer to come in, right, to be imported into Germany, or do they? Yeah. 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 Okay. I think Steamworks from Vancouver is sold in Germany. I mean, Stone built a brewery in Berlin. Um, Urban Chestnut Brewing is um, also here with a brewery. Um, just to mention a few of them, I mean, and more and more coming in, I, I think that's a sign also that there is a market for that, such beer. Uh, I, I recently saw a lot of Lagunitas. Um, yeah, it, there's more and more coming in, and the thing is, you know, that's why I also started my other business called Pro Hops. Um, so also the breweries here in Europe can go more experimental, buy directly from the farmers. It's a platform actually for brewers and farmers where the brewers can buy their hops directly from the farmers. And there you can easily just pick and choose your hops you want to have, and then it's coming directly from the farmers to your place. Um, and for sure, if you have, like, if your supply chain is easy enough that it can experiment, I hope that's also uh, contributing in the beer and that they're trying something new, maybe a Hennis, which is a dry hop, or I had some really nice sweet beers, dry hop wheat beers. They come with a really nice fruity flavor. Yeah, there's a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Wow, interesting. Um, and what do you see? Another question is like, what do you see uh, challenges of craft beer today? I know uh, you know the strict law. Maybe maybe brewers want to be a little bit more experimental in Germany. Do you see that or? It's hard because you need to train and change the consumer um, over here. Like I said, we have a really long and very, very strong history with drinking beer. Um, and it's, it's, it's really within our culture to drink and celebrate with beer and to have beer. Um, that's why it's kind of hard really to implement new beer styles like the double IPA, for example. It's, there's definitely a market for it and people really like it too, but I think I think there's not a big volume for the consumers or the consumer base because like most beer people drink is like the standard beer, it's like the Helles wheat beer, you know. Who controls that law, that German purity law? Is it an actual, I guess it's an actual law, right? Yeah, like I said, it's the full rest of the set, which is the law, and it's the state. So Bavaria has its own, and... Uh, Baden-Württemberg, all the states in Germany. Oh, so each state they has their own it. law, okay. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get too confusing about the purity law. No, here. no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting. No, that's interesting. You can't even call it beer. If you, if you, you know, and they wouldn't even let you sell it. Wow. Um, so, um, what do you think about a larger uh, beer? I guess in Germany, it's such a, it's just, such a part of the culture that the smaller breweries are e even though there's a lot of them kind of every town has their own brewery at least or how does it work there and they and they sustain the brewery like people go in and they drink beer and they buy from them yeah i mean like i said you can buy a trade of beer 20 bottles in basically every bottle shop over here um but especially speaking about the area um, I'm like south of Bavaria, so it's like the, the heart of Bavaria. And when you look at Franconia, you can actually drive to every village and you will find like a brewery there. And that's still the meeting point for the people where people meet, where people have a beer after work, where people come together, where they're having a good time after work, where like all the stress falling from them. Um, that's what we do in the beer garden. That's actually where I'm heading next to. <laughs> and just enjoy an ice cold beer in, in the beer garden and like meet the local people. I think that's, that's also the idea of craft beer that you bring people together. Right. And that's what we try to promote. I mean, it's community, you know, and, and Germany has uh, been an example of that. It's just beer brings people together. Like you're saying, um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Which, which is awesome. It's just supporting the local the local brewer, the local, uh, and there's a restaurant attached to the brewery, so supporting local food. It just helps everybody locally, which I think is, is awesome, you know. Um, are you going to Oktoberfest this year? Or? Uh, I might be, yeah. I might go. I mean, I grew up right next to uh, Munich in Franklin, so <laughs> I'm quite used to Oktoberfest. Well, if you have an opportunity and you don't want to go, <laughs> give me your ticket. or I mean, I'll go. I'll find a way over there. That was that was awesome experience. It was just great, you know. It's just I love beer and being there, having delicious beer, and the the community too. They just have these big long tables, you know, and and just women bring out these huge, like pints. Well, they're like quarts of beer or something, liters of beer. Yeah, liter, like a stein. Yeah, and they just just slam it on a table. And then, I don't know, they charge you 10 euros for the liter. I'm like, all right, that's that's great. And then they would come with food, like whole chickens and bread and, and sauce. It was delicious. My God. I just remember it. I, I got to get back there somehow. I got to figure this out. You know, you need to come up for Oktoberfest because like, Oktoberfest is like the biggest one. You need to come, like, every village has, like, its small Oktoberfest. Like, the small folk fest, we call it. So it's like a, a fair where like every town has it and like all the communities meeting in the beer towns. It's, and it's, it's exactly like you described, but not as big as Oktoberfest. And they're usually a little bit more uh, settled and people are also really nice. And yeah, I think they're like, they're more easy to go to because Oktoberfest is super stressful as well. I mean, there's so many people. Yeah. When did those happen? Did they happen actually, before or, or throughout the year? Or when, when did those happen? Uh, all the way to Oktoberfest. I think Oktoberfest is like one of the last ones. Oh, okay. So, so it happens right now, they have like all exciting. summer maybe? Or? Yeah, exactly. And every town has it like a different time. So you can even like, you can tour whole Bavaria for the whole summer and like be on a big Oktoberfest, like be on one every day. Oh my God. All right, <laughs> next year. <laughs> no, we're talking. I got to buy my ticket this year and do that. I didn't realize that, you know. Well, I mean, I'm not there, and I don't know. I mean, I know Oktoberfest because it's huge. I mean, everybody knows Oktoberfest, but um, just to be in in communities, you know, local communities off the beaten path and celebrating local beer and uh, food, I think that'd be fantastic. I have to figure this out. Yeah, I have to figure yeah. it out. And we'll do a podcast in each town. There's a lady here, actually. She's uh, I interviewed her. She bought a, a school bus, an old school bus, and she uh, she's going in the uh, to each state, the lower 48 states here in the United States. She's going to make a stop in each state and just uh, you know be at a brewery and celebrate. And uh, you know, um, I was offering to do a podcast in each uh, brewery that she stops in. We'll see what happens, but. I think a German, oh my God, a Germ like a Bavaria, like do a summer. Wow, that's an uh -huh. idea. Yep. I just have to yep. figure out somebody Absolutely. who can pay it, you know. <laughs> I won't be doing anything. Be be a a yeah, we have to find sponsors. <laughs> so if any sponsors out there, you know, let me know. Let's do it. All right, so... Yeah, so I mean, Germany is, is really great for uh, local craft beer, and um, you know, what, what would you say to somebody here in the U.S. that hasn't really tried any German beer? Uh, you know, what what would you say to them, like to try to, uh, you know, to to really break out of their pattern, maybe of drinking the 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 log the U.S. lagers, you know, the the watery types of beers. You know, we want we want to educate people, and we want people to try new things. I mean, what what would you say to them here? in terms of, uh, you know, trying German beer, some good German beer? I think the most important for beer in general is drink it fresh. Beer hates it when you store it. Beer hates temperature. Beer hates every movement. Um, the fresher you can get it, the better the beer is. Um, you can have the most delicious beer when they're, like, coming right off the brewery. And, yeah, I think that's, that's very, very important to a beer. Not just buy it, like, some nameless beers 
in the grocery store by the price, but look for the best before and that the beer is really fresh. And that's, I think that's the most important when it comes to the quality and the taste of the beer. Right. Um, yeah, because the two, the two big enemies of beer are, well, three, uh, time, um, sunlight, and uh, oxygen, actually, if oxygen gets in the beer. That's bad. Yeah, absolutely. So, yep. um, well, that gives you all the more, um, you know, reason for people to try local beer, even if it's uh, maybe not German beer, but local, you know, your local brewery. Get out to your local brewery, which is what the Germans do. They go to their local breweries and they support them, which is great. You yep. know, it's uh, it, that's the way it should be. You know, you make fresh local beer, and that's what that's that's what yep. uh, that's what that's what's great. You know about. Uh, about local craft beer. So your new companies, uh, what are you doing now and how, how is that helping the beer industry? Maybe you can go into that a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm traveling quite a bit in Europe and I'm uh, doing sales or consumption consulting for craft breweries in Europe, um, especially when it comes to um, the technical part. So, um, the brew houses, the fermenters, the processing part, how you transfer the wort and beers most effectively not to save water, for example, to save energy, also to make a consistent product. Um, yeah, that's what I do a lot. Um, I also, like I said before, I'm helping breweries and brewers to source directly with the producer, so when it comes to malt, for example, I have some producers, malt houses um, I'm working with. I have a lot of hop farmers I'm friends with, so we're, we're just distributing the hops directly to the breweries. Um, they're mostly hand-selected hops. They come with a really strict and very straightforward quality. Um, we do that European-wide, but also we ship a lot to USA. Of these hubs. Um, and as I said before, I'm also doing like a little bit of general consulting. Um, as I've seen, it's like really a lot of breweries. So, um, yeah, a little bit an all rounder when it comes to this. So, and it's not just me alone. Like, I have a bunch of people in my bag, um, working with me. They're all brewing engineers, brewers. They all have like basically the same background and it's, uh, the idea of ProBrow, like bring the best people from the industry together to help the industry. That's great. Yeah, so you're consulting. Now, where are you sourcing the hops from? Is it from all Germany or is it around the world? Or Yeah, like like I started in Germany because it's uh, my hometown, I'd say. Like like I said before, I grew up in Freising, and Freising is like a little bit south of the other town, maybe 30 miles south of the Holocaust, so I have basically like a very direct link to them. And I have some really good friends being hop farmers, and yeah, we, on a, on a regular basis, we're on the phone basically talking about their hops, and they, they really have like the same mindset as a craft brewer. They want to, like, they always target for the best aroma and the quality of their hops. They, they, they use different techniques to make the aroma better of their heart. So, yeah, that's why we're talking. So we're a little bit the direct link from the brewer to the grower. Um, but I have also some really nice contacts to U.S. farmers, for example. So I have some contacts to Greek farmers as uh, well. I have a good friend of mine. He runs a hop farm in Slovenia. They do also... Very, very nice hops, um, like during wool, very new varieties, but they're really also crashing into the market because they, they come with a really unique flavor profile. Um, yeah, and for sure all the German hops, uh, some contacts in Australia, but pretty much worldwide. I'm also traveling quite a bit, so. Are you? Well, if you're in the yeah. New York area <laughs> or the New Hampshire area or Boston area, let me know. I'd like to have a beer with you. Yeah, I, it would be a pleasure for me. Actually, I'm planning to travel on this, so 
All right, yeah, keep me posted. Let me know the details. Um, so if people wanted to connect with you, how, what's the easiest way if they have questions or they're, they're starting a brewery or hops or what's the best way to get in touch with you? Send me an email um, to wagner at com or just giving me a call, my cell phone. Or you can also look it up uh, in the internet. You can look it up at uh, www uh com or the other project with the hops is the uh, pro hops p r o h o p s dot d e okay, yeah there's like all different contact possibilities wow that's great all right yeah i know i love uh, german ingredients we use a lot of them in our beer um we use irish barley as the base but we, but i also uh, use a lot of German, uh, you know, barley and, and wheat, um, uh, best malts, Weirman, delicious, you know, deli- good stuff, make great beer. Uh, so I, I yeah, appreciate, really make it. yeah, no, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate Germany for, for, uh, for, for everything they produce. I, pr- I appreciate their beer. I appreciate you for, for, uh, being on the podcast and, and what you're doing. I think it's great. I would like to meet you at some point one day and have a beer. Uh, otherwise, I'll meet you next summer when I do the tour of of Munich. Oh, the fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to figure it out. <laughs> but uh, you know, I appreciate you being on the uh, podcast, Andreas, and uh, uh, I, I wish you the best. And let's let's stay in touch. Absolutely. Thanks for letting me call in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was Andreas Wagner of uh, ProBrow. He has a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and I've learned a lot about uh, Germany. And and you know they won't even let you sell uh, if you call it beer and it's not according to the German purity law, which I will learn how to pronounce that um, the German term. I have to practice. But uh, they won't even let you sell it, so they're serious about their beer. Uh, but their beer is delicious. If you haven't tried German beer, get on it. You know, get your local craft beer store, uh, or get your local uh, brewery and uh, try some some German styles. You know, there's a lot of Hefeweizens out there, and now, yeah, they'll be coming out uh, in the fall. Uh, but if you like what you heard, um, you know, go to iTunes, give us a rating, give us a review. Uh, we would really appreciate it. Uh, that's the only way we can get, uh, the podcast out there and, and, and preach the gospel about craft beer and how good it is, uh, for you and, uh, that it is an alternative to mass produced watered down beer. So until next time, uh, we will, uh, talk to you. Take care.